Well, folks, the Robozoid here, and yeah, apparently this Bros movie came out uh, about a week or so ago, I guess. I don't know how long it's been by now, but this movie hit theaters and bombed, and I mean bombed hard. The reason why? Well, who the hell wants to see two guys in making love? If the truth be told, nobody wanted to see this movie. And don't and don't give me that weak garbage. Well, the public wasn't ready for it. That this is groundbreaking and original, and the public just wasn't ready to accept it yet. That is such nonsense. The truth is, this is just gross. You people have crossed the line between a really awful movie and just terrible porn. And I'll get into the whole porn thing in a minute or so. But first, let me just say, yeah, no one wanted to see this bromance because nobody likes romantic movies as it is as it turns out anyway. I mean, you know how romantic comedies suck, or I guess nowadays the uh, literally challenged often say rom-coms. I guess because romance, because uh, romantic comedy is too much of a mouthful these days. Let me get that image off your screen. I, I respect you too much. And I really don't want to hear the crap from anybody that, well, you're homophobic, you're a bigot, if you don't like this movie. Shut up. I know plenty of gay people who actually didn't like this movie at all. And I know a lot of gay people who just want to be left alone, who don't like shoving their choice of lifestyle in others' faces. That's just a fact. Those people actually do exist. It's just that Hollywood doesn't want you to hear about them. Hell, even some movie I never heard of called Smile did a lot better at the box office. And I didn't even know that these old broads were still alive, did you? So, basically what this film bros is all about is a bromance between, homosexu between two homosexual men. You can clearly see on the bottom there, the movie poster is them, well, basically squeezing each other's buttocks. Yeah, that should be an automatic turnoff right there. The truth is that this Rotten Tomatoes score, that's probably believable. Audience score, 92%. I don't believe that for one second. I think that's made up because no audience would go to see this piece of crap at all. It's not really a movie that entices me to go see it at all because why would I want to? But if it exists, then it exists. I mean, cancel culture is not going to be going after this movie anytime soon, I'm sure. In fact, I'm sure they revel in it. And then, of course, there was the birdcage with Robin Williams and Nathan Lanes playing gay lovers. Well, that movie turned out to be pretty good, and it was a comedy. After all, with Robin Williams, would you expect anything else but over-the-top silliness? As opposed to blaming homophobia for why this film failed, you knew this film was going to fail. You should have known that because you didn't have a real target audience except for a very few small minority of, of queers and lesbos who might go see this film. And if, by the way, if I sound homophobic in this, it's not because I'm attempting to be, it's just, I'm doing it for your own good. You know, it's tough love. You need to be told the truth. Facts don't care about your feelings. And quite honestly, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you think about this video. All I care about is the truth. And the truth is, people don't want to see a movie of two guys banging in bed. They just don't. It's a real turnoff to women. I mean, they really... You, you think women like to see two guys banging in bed? I mean, obviously guys like to see two women banging in bed, but those guys are pathetic. I mean, you're not going to like what I have to say. And if you don't like what I have to say, then that's just too damn bad, I guess. People who like pornography, men who revel in watching pornography, are pathetic. They are simply pathetic. They watch it because they know they're never going to get any of themselves. Of course, if it weren't bad enough... This guy, Billy Eichner, or Etchner, however you say his name, basically slams Twitter... Uh, basically slams the trolls of Twitter for criticism against bros and promises to tweet about the movie every day to spite them. Uh, buddy, that's not a good strategy. 
Just own up to your mistake and apologize for making a bad movie that nobody liked. I mean, hell, do I even have to play the Joel Schumacher clip again? It is no fault of any straight person whatsoever if this moron has no class or humility. And besides, if he doesn't shave that pedo beard, he might be in a heap of trouble. Blaming homophobia is just not going to get you anywhere. It's just not. Just admit you made a mistake, okay? Scott Mendelson. Even Scott Mendelson, who I once referred to as Scott Mendelson, actually did have to say that it's kind of hard to get comedies to be a success these days because of the whole woke thing going on these days in current year politics. But he's absolutely right. It's hard to actually get a good comedy to be a hit these days because you're afraid of hurting somebody's fifis. And yeah, romantic comedies or rom-coms, as the uh, illiterately lazy like to say today, basically, those movies are not hits at all because it's only just chicks who drag their boyfriends to go see these movies. And let's be honest, they're going to fall asleep during this film while the girlfriend is going to be crying her little eyes out over how beautiful it was when, quite frankly, yeah, it's a yawn to me. And of course guys don't like chick flicks. Never did. That's just the way it goes. And yeah, that's what rom-coms used to be called. They used to be called chick flicks. Maybe there are some people who are gay who don't feel like they need representation from you FDBD people or whatever you are now. Maybe there are some people who are gay who just want to be left alone and don't need to rub everything in uh, everyone's faces. Let me make sure I'm crystal clear on this. I'm a sexual libertarian. Whatever you do in the, in the privacy of your own home, that's your business. As long as you're not involving children in it, I'm fine. But quite frankly, you need to learn that some people are just never going to accept what you do. Those are just the facts. And again, facts don't care about your feelings. If there's anybody watching this that, let's say, loved Batman forever and went into Batman and Robin with great anticipation, if I, if I disappointed them in any way, then I really want to apologize because it wasn't my intention. My intention was just to entertain them. Whatever the clear implications of Schumacher's words were, he was genuinely sorry. If people didn't like Batman and Robin, then he apologized for it. When a filmmaker has enough class and enough humility to admit that they made a mistake and made a bad movie that nobody liked, great, I can forgive and forget. Schumacher learned that lesson. So did the Wachowski brothers on the Matrix sequels. And, well, of course, so did Stallone on Rocky V. Now, why do I bring up Batman and Robin here, even though that movie's been out now for 25 years? Well, the answer is actually rather simple, really. Remember all the gay jokes people made about that movie when it came out? The nipples on the rubber bat suits? Hell, Kevin Smith even called it a gay fantasia. I'm not kidding. I don't know. I think Rocky Horror may have started a disturbing trend, though, but that's just my opinion. Philadelphia might have gotten the ball rolling on that as well, but you have to remember, back in 1993 when that movie came out, it was still kind of taboo. It was still kind of a taboo subject, but it wasn't quite as in your face as, say, a lot of today's movies are. I think Hanks pulled off a really good portrayal of a gay man dying of AIDS, and well, Denzel Washington was just excellent as the lawyer who represented him in his case. Personally, I think he was also the comic relief, as he was given the better lines. You know, two sailors down below making flippy flop. And then, of course, there was the birdcage, with Robin Williams and Nathan Lanes playing gay lovers. Well, that movie turned out to be pretty good, and it was a comedy. After all, with Robin Williams, would you expect anything else but over-the-top silliness? And then, of course, in 1997, there was the movie In and Out with Kevin Klein and Joan Cusack. You remember, is everybody gay? Huh? 
Anybody remember that movie? Huh? I... Never mind. The 2018 biopic on Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, was a good film. Remy Malek did a good portrayal of Freddie Mercury. And it, uh, I know, I'm a hardcore fan, and so I like to nitpick what they got wrong and what they got right. But, you know, it takes certain liberties to create bits of fiction in a biopic. That's just the way it goes. But it didn't stop me from enjoying the movie for what it was. After all, I'm a big fan, and I really liked the acting in it. I thought it was superb. Rocket Man, the biopic on Elton John, was pretty good, didn't do very well at the box office, and focused a little too heavily on Elton's sexuality, but still, it was entertaining. But getting back to Titanic for a minute, yeah, I remember when that crappy movie came out. Basically, girls were dragging their boyfriends to go see this movie, and then having a, uh, and then getting angry at their boyfriends for having such a cold reaction to it. I mean, and to use confused Matthew's words, this was not a movie about the Titanic. This basically should have been called Sinking Boat because it was just a generic, standard love story that looked and sounded like it came out of the 90s. And you know what? He was right. And even though that video's been around for a long time now, I'd recommend you check it out. Well, really, that's all I've got on this subject. I don't mean to sound homophobic, I don't mean to sound mean or rage or angry or anything like that. It's just, people don't want this kind of stuff anymore. And you have to get that message, LGBT people. You gotta get with the program. People don't want what you're selling anymore, okay? We'll just have to agree to disagree, I suppose. Anyway, this has been the Robozoid saying, well, I'm going to be currently working on a video, a special video, for the 100th anniversary of the classic film Nosferatu, the German expressionist horror film that may or may not be the first Dracula movie. Sorry about that lawnmower out there. Well, anyway, I'll see you later. And in the meantime, I think it's important that all filmmakers and anyone in showbiz in general should just listen to the fans and remember, wokeness is weakness.